take the extra hour or two or three. It's worth it. Stay at the lab, get a full-blown OGTT, oral glucose tolerance test, or even an insulin survey. These things are so important. And OGTT is where you get you uh, fast for eight hours, you get a blood sugar and an insulin value, then you take the glucola, an hour later you get the blood sugar again, and an hour later you get the blood sugar again. It tells us exactly what's going on with your body. Even more importantly, add insulin to that one and two and three hour value. Once you do that, you get a huge increase in information. I've finally been able to get Quest Labs to agree to do that. It took me months to get that done. Here's what I'm finding out. Two or three patients per month have a normal OGTT, but they have to, they have to uh, use double the amount of insulin to keep their blood sugars normal. Why is that important? Because insulin causes inflammation just like glucose. So uh, think about it. Once you get your uh, CIMT today, um, and this is old information in an old study, I, I, and I'll tell you, it's incredibly conservative. According to this study done way back in 11, they found that 70% of people that had any plaque at all had insulin resistance. But here's the thing. That was measured by A1C and fasting blood glucose alone. When you realize that 20% of the cases are missing, missed through those studies, it's probably more like 90%. And I would say 90% is, um, is much more uh, the types of numbers that I see in my practice. What, what about the other 10%? It's usually people with inflammatory disease like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. Those inflammatory diseases cause as much risk for heart attack and stroke as diabetes. So um, again, I've described the glucose tolerance test. For sake of your time and David's, I'm going to uh, not repeat that. Um, you can go into my other videos and we'll go into details on how to interpret an uh, oral glucose tolerance test, how to get one done, uh, how to interpret a craft uh, pre-diabetes or insulin survey. Um, these are great tests. You can do those at home. Uh, if you want to know how to do them, we can certainly help you get that done. Um, a lot of people get very interested and got a lot of comments when I showed this diagram. It's hard to see, but it basically shows the patterns that Dr. Kraft saw when he did thousands of these um, insulin surveys. The first one is normal with your blood sugar peaking up around uh, 120. You know, coming in in the 80s, peaking at 120, getting back to about 100 uh, at hour uh, one and a half, two, and then back down into the uh, to the 80s, with uh, insulin levels going starting between uh, zero and five, going up usually no higher than uh, 50, sometimes 80, and then coming back down within a couple of hours to less than 10. Here's what happens as you start getting more and more insulin resistant. Your blood sugar continues to climb beyond the 120, then up into 140, and then takes a little bit longer to get back down to 120. So at hour one, you're at 120, hour two, you're at 140, uh, hour and a half, two hours, uh, three hours, you're finally starting to get back down. Um, uh, insulin levels, are peaking up higher. They're going beyond 50, beyond 60, going up to 80. Um, with uh, pattern 3A, further uh, delay. And that's exactly what I've seen with several patients. We demonstrated that on a couple of our videos, where up at uh, hours two even, you still have continuing increase going up to 160, 140, 160, even 180 in terms of uh, glucose uh, values and 
again, these are showing some fairly low insulin levels. I've seen insulin levels go up over a hundred uh, at our, even at hour one and two, trying to keep their blood sugar down. And again, uh, having a high insulin level is, is just as bad, just as inflammatory as having a high glucose level. What gets very interesting is, uh, what well, I've just, this, uh, Pattern four is the hyperinsulinemia pattern. Uh, I've described that a couple of times already. And then pattern five is insulopenic. In other words, you've burned out all of your beta cells. You don't have any insulin left. Your blood sugar goes up to 200 or more before it finally comes back down. That's full-blown diabetes. Once your blood sugar at any stage with any kind of challenge, including this one, goes over 200, that's one of the criteria. Uh, you meet the criteria for being full-blown diabetic. Don't panic if that happens. And I have that happen again a few times a month. Don't panic if that happens. It's happened to me. Um, we manage that to a large extent the very same way that we manage. It's just uh, um, that we manage insulin resistance. It's a stronger form of insulin resistance. There are things to do and it usually does not mean that you're gonna to have to go on insulin or any type of injectable drug. Now, again, I mentioned triglyceride to HDL ratio. I um, mentioned home glucose monitoring. You can do that with uh, finger stick, but I would strongly suggest that you try the Freestyle Libre. You see it on many of my videos. And again, as I mentioned before, that's like 70 bucks to get continuous glucose monitoring for a couple of weeks, what you find is what your blood sugar is doing between midnight and 6 a.m. I don't care how good you are in terms of doing your finger sticks, you're not gonna wake up in the middle of the night routinely and do that. This helps you understand those kind of patterns. It helps you understand how you're different from day to day, how you change. Some people have problems with lentils, other, people's, other people don't. There's a lot of variation in this, in our body's reaction to different foods, to different uh, days, depending on how we slept and our cortisol levels. This is how you can start beginning to understand this. And again, we've been flying blind in this up until now. Now information's available. We can start managing this. So, um, it's... Uh, there are a lot of things that we can do to manage it. By far the most important is diet. The second most important is diet. The third most important is diet. Other things that are important, good sleep, exercise is incredibly important. Uh, one of the major components of diet is keeping a proper muscle to body fat mass ratio. Again, we've got videos available to you for all of that. Now, let's say you've gotten all of this done. You get a CIMT. You're interested in doing more. There's a lot of different ways that we can get help for you, ranging from you can basically for the most part uh, follow the free advice in the in the free videos on YouTube and get very far. As you see in many of the comments, I've had many viewers do just that. If you'd like more help, we can do that, ranging from a full concierge type of service all the way back down to one of our newest services a webinar series. A webinar series is a way to, it's sort of a mix between do it yourself and, um, and working with the doctor. Basically what you do is we will help, we will provide you with lab requisitions, um, things that you need to get the proper labs, lists and orders for the labs. And then you attend uh, webinars. That's a plan to be small groups and so far we do continue to have very small group webinars where you we talk about uh, inflammation, we talk about plaque, we talk about insulin resistance, and we talk about specific individual results. So we help you interpret it. Uh, what time are those things right now? Uh, we may change it, but right now we're doing them Tuesdays at 11 Eastern Time. Um, I I don't remember the price. I think it's about $250 um, to get the labs that you need and attend the uh, webinars for three months. You also get a three-month subscription to the webinar content that's been presented uh, during that uh, 
past three month time period. Um, I'm, as you know, I'm passionate about this. I want to make this kind of information available. I um, greatly appreciate what you're doing in terms of interest and taking a look at what we're doing. If you'd like to get into this and find out a little bit more, you can go to the uh, membership page. You go to our website, uh, prevmedheartrisk.com. There's a new button here, membership login. You just click on that button. If you haven't signed in already, it's a free uh, uh, membership. You give your email, you sign in, create a free account. And then that gives you the basic overview of all of the information and content that we have. A lot of free content. We've got a book coming out uh, within a couple of months on plaque recognition and some of the things that I talked about here. Uh, you get the, the intro and the uh, first chapter of that book for free in, on this uh, membership page. You get, uh, we've got two courses out there already and a third getting ready to come out. One on plaque, one on inflammation, and one on uh, insulin resistance. Again, free content out of each of those courses is available just by going into the membership site. And if you want to just get it all done, you want to make some investment of a couple of days of your time and uh, the money to get all of the labs and the CIMT, you can come to a, a, an event with us. So we've got one coming up in Louisville, uh, November 8th and 9th. My name is Ford Brewer. I started off as an ER doc, became, became very frustrated with the fact that most things that bring people into the ER were preventable, like heart attack and stroke. I went to Johns Hopkins to get training and ended up running the program there in prevention. There I trained dozens of docs, and again, that was three decades ago. Since then, I've trained thousands of docs, and even more importantly, um, supervised those docs, and even most importantly, helped thousands of patients prevent things like heart attack and stroke. Uh, waiting for, a, for the disease and hoping for a cure for this kind of devastation doesn't work. So <clears throat> come to uh, Louisville, no, November 8th and 9th. We have a boot camp type of environment for two days where you learn all the things that you didn't learn from your doc in terms of heart attack, stroke prevention, things like cardiovascular inflammation, how to detect it, how to measure it, things like uh, insulin resistance, the number one cause of inflammation, how to detect it, how to measure it, how to stop it, how to manage it. You also get, um, you can get the labs there if, um, for that event if you'd like and get a complete evaluation. In addition, you get an arterial scan called a CIMT. To get the right one of those is fairly difficult. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thanks.